Hello and welcome to our parent and carer maths workshop for children who are in reception. Firstly, how do we teach maths in reception? So we plan and deliver a curriculum that embeds mathematical thinking and talk both within our teacher led inputs, but also within free flow and continuous provision. It's vital that children learn mathematical vocabulary and then are able to apply this independently in their own learning, as it shows that children have gained a deep understanding of what that vocabulary means. So, for example, if we are looking at measuring height, um, children being able to independently use the vocabulary um, taller and shorter and using it appropriately where necessary. Children are encouraged to record their maths in a variety of ways. So, for example, it might be through discussion um, where we will make notes of what the children say. It may be through them drawing pictures or writing their numbers um, and also using a variety of objects um, to showcase maybe their counting, for example. Um, and there are some photos here. So the first one shows children writing their numbers on large sheets of paper. And the other one shows where they have a number and then they are showing that number in a variety of ways. Um, and that's really important because it shows that your child has a deep understanding of that number. They understand that seven raisins, for example, is exactly the same as seven cars. So as I've already mentioned, we have daily teacher led inputs. This happens every day for a maximum of around 15 minutes. And it's where new skills are taught to children. They then have opportunities during free flow. So there's activities on the tables um, which are provided to enable children to demonstrate their mathematical ideas and their understanding. So children may apply the new skills which have been learnt during teacher-led inputs but also using their own understanding and their own ideas um, to develop an activity as well. So an exam some examples of activities that may be on the tables um, are in the photos below on the slide. So we've got some plates with some pom-poms and some tweezers where the children have to tweezer that amount of pom-poms onto the plate. And that's just showing that they understand that quantity and what that quantity may look like. We then have an example of hangers and pegs, so showing that they understand what three looks like and what four looks like, but also that they've got an understanding of what add means. So add means combining those two numbers to make a whole new number. And then we've got pipe cleaners and shapes. So it's just a practical activity. Um, can the children name the shapes, but also can they show us what they look like? So there are five main counting principles and I'm going to go through them now. If you have um, some resource which you could use at home, so maybe some grapes or some raisins or pencils, um, then you could have a go at doing this at home now by yourself. So the one to one principle is when we assign one number to each object as we count. Um, and it's making sure that children only count each object once. So sometimes children will count the same object more than once. So they might, for example, if we had five objects, they might go one, two, three, four, five, six. So they've counted one of those objects more than one time. So we often say to them, one touch, one number, so that they know that each object which they touch has only one number. Or sometimes a child may miss out an object that needs counting and this can lead um, to inaccurate counting. So it's really important that your child counts each one and touches each one which they can see. Um, to support them with this, we also encourage them to line up the objects as they are counting. And this supports their one to one correspondence. The second counting principle is the stable order principle. 
So this is where children learn that when they count, numbers need to be said in a certain order. So when we're counting to five, we can't say five, three, two, one, because then we're not going to know how many um, there is altogether the quantity of that amount. So we encourage children to count aloud to larger numbers, um, but without necessarily expecting them to be able to count that number of objects straight away. So we support them with that counting. Counting principle number three. So this is where children learn that the number assigned to the final object, so if we're counting to five again, one, two, three, four, five. So five is the last number that I've said, and that is the total number of objects in that set. So children, to be able to do this, children need to be able to confidently be able to do the principle number one and principle number two. And from a large group, children will be able to select a given number. So if we have 20 bears, for example, on the table, children will be able to select five or 10 bears and count them out. And when you ask them how many there are all together, they will be able to say, I have five, without having to then count them again. So counting principle number four, the abstractation principle. This is where children learn that anything can be counted. So it doesn't just have to be those bears which we are moving or those gems which we are moving. It could be claps, jumps, spins, um, the cars that we can see driving past. Um, it could be the sounds which we can hear. Um, and we do lots of practice of this and we really encourage this um, within both within our maths inputs but also within everyday um, school life so it might be through PE if we're doing jumps um, and this this principle so principle number four is slightly more challenging because it can be counting imaginary objects in the child's head um, and it's also involves not necessarily counting physical objects which they can move. Principle number five, the order of relevance principle. So this is where children learn that the order we count objects in is irrelevant. We still get the same total if I count them forwards or from um, left to right or from right to left or if I changed the layout and counted them from top down or down to the top, the number still stays the same. There will still be five bears there, no matter how we lay them out. And to support them with this as well, we do a lot of irregular arrangements and maybe looking at the layout on a dice as well that can support children with their counting. So number blocks, you are probably already familiar with this programme, but it is a brilliant resource which we use all the time in reception. It really helps um, to provide your child with a good understanding of the numberness of number. So as I mentioned earlier, that is understanding that three grapes is exactly the same as three trees or three apples or three cars. Um, we will often watch an episode of Number Blocks and then have a massive discussion about this in the classroom. So encouraging lots of STEM sentences, so speaking in a sentence, talking about what we saw. Um, so for example, we've recently watched the Number 8 episode so he, he um, it's talking about then octo, what does octo mean? So it means eight. What other words can we think of that have octo in? So octagon, octopus. Why do you think they're called that? Well, an octopus has eight legs. So it's also encouraging your child to make those links um, between what they already know and also their new learning. It's 
number blocks is also really good um, for being able to form their numerals and also being able to supertize. So supertize is when a child can look at a number and can tell you how many there are without counting. So for example, they could look if we didn't have the numerals one, two or three on the picture in front of us, they would be able to look at number three and tell you that there's three without counting the blocks. Um, and number blocks is really good for supporting this. Number blocks is also fantastic for ordering numbers um, because of the colours, your children get familiar with what they look like. And as I mentioned earlier, the recognition of numbers as well. Children should have already received their Numbots login for at home. If you don't have this, then please feel free to get in touch with us so that we can provide you with this. It's a really good resource um, for your child to use to become confident with their numbers. And it's basically in a game format. So there's rewards throughout it. Children get to build robots and go on adventures. There is, we have had a conversation with a few parents, there is um, kind of a, a time limit. It expects your child to answer questions quite quickly. Again, that's all about building up your child's confidence um, to check their understanding as well. Um, next, by the end of reception. So this is what your child is expected to do by the end of reception in maths. So it's split into two categories. So first of all, we have number. So within number, your child is expected to have a deep understanding of number to 10. So including the composition of each number. So for example, if we're looking at the number five, your child will understand that two and three makes five or five and zero makes five. Um, they can supertize. So as I mentioned earlier, that's recognising quantities without having to count. So they could see five apples and tell you that's five without counting them. But it's only up to five. And again, as I mentioned earlier, looking at different arrangements of quantities helps support this. So you could put, for example, four grapes on their plate. Can they tell you how many there are without counting them? Next, the automatic recall of number bonds up to five. So number bonds is when you have two numbers, which when we add them together, equal five. So five add zero equals five. One add four equals five. Two add three equals five. And it's your child being able to do that confidently without referring to being counting or using rhymes or their fingers. So we practice that a lot and embed that a lot within our practice in school. And then your child using that to then become confident with some number bonds to 10. So 7 add 3 equals 10, 6 add 4 equals 10, including double facts. So if we have 3 on this hand and 3 on this hand, how many do we have all together? Well, I know that that's 6. We then move on to numerical patterns. So by the end of reception, children are expected to verbally count beyond 20, recognising the pattern of the counting system. So for example, knowing that 13 is one ten and three ones. And then when we get to 20, it then becomes 23. And when we get to 30, it's 33. Well, what's the difference between 23 and 33? 23 is two tens and three ones. 33 is three tens and three ones. Um, comparing quantities up to 10 in different contexts. So for example, if I have five grapes on my plate and you have one, who's got more? How do you know? Well, I know that Miss May has more because five is a bigger number than one. And also recognising, so it's not just about being able to recognise who's got more or who's got less, but also when the quantities are the same. 
And lastly, exploring and representing patterns within numbers up to 10. So looking at evens and odds and then using their knowledge and their understanding of evens and odds to then be able to understand quantities which can be distributed equally, so sharing um, and also doubling. So for example, I know that four could be shared equally between two people and that's because it's an even number. And lastly, there's some key vocabulary on this slide just for you to have a look at in your own time. Um, and then the meaning of that vocabulary as well, um, which we use. We do teach your children this vocabulary within our teacher led inputs in the classroom. Um, and we also have a conversation about how your child can learn this vocabulary. So your children will be confident with knowing that subitizing is when we look at a quantity and we can tell you how many there are without counting. And it just helps us be a bit faster um, with our maths. I hope that was useful for you. If you have any questions at all, um, please feel free to either email us at eyfs at gloryfarmschool.co.uk or contact the office and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you.